Hello everybody, welcome to the final part of Unit 3 Biology Area of Study 2 where today we are going to be focusing on the dot points related to immunity. So in terms of looking at immunity, we're going to be looking at the difference between natural and artificial immunity and active and passive strategies for acquiring immunity. We're going to be looking at different vaccination programs and herd immunity. Also discussing the deficiencies and malfunctions of the immune system. So looking at autoimmune diseases, immunodeficient diseases and allergic reactions. And also discussing monoclonal antibodies in the treatment of cancer. Now because each of these videos go for a maximum of 15 minutes, if we have some time, I know that the last video where we were talking about the three lines of defense was cut a little bit short. So I'll try to go through a little bit of that as well. All right, so looking at the first part, in terms of strategies for acquiring immunity, we can separate our headings. So we can have natural active, we can have natural passive, we can have artificial active, and we can have artificial passive. So when we're discussing this, and when we're looking at active, active is where antibodies are being produced by their own cells. Passive is where antibodies are being produced from someone else's immune system, okay? Natural is where antibodies are being produced without any medical intervention. And artificial is where antibodies are being produced with medical intervention. Okay, so when we separate them, an example of natural active immunity is when you actually get sick and your body responds via the immune system um, to create antibodies against the pathogens that are invading the system. Uh, natural passive is where a baby can get antibodies through breast milk, so from breastfeeding or from uh, antibodies that cross the placenta when they are born. We then have artificial actives, which would be um, when you're given a vaccination, okay, which contains um, maybe an attenuated virus where your body has to then create antibodies against that. So when you actually get infected by that, your body can then produce those antibodies um, a lot more rapidly. We then have artificial passive, where we are straight injecting the antibodies into the body. All right, moving on. In terms of looking at vaccines, we know that vaccines stimulate an immune response. Okay, and they stimulate an immune response so that the body is then going to have to create antibodies against the virus that has been injected. So the antigen of the pathogen is what is being injected, okay? And then memory cells are going to be created, those B memory cells are going to be created to make low level of antibodies so that when you are actually um, come in contact with that particular pathogen, your body has those memory cells there so it can speed up the production of antibodies that are gonna target the antigens of those invading pathogens. So vaccines can be inactivated, all right, where the virus is effectively dead. It can be attenuated, where the virus can still infect a cell, but it's not going to cause a particular disease. It can be a toxoid, so it's toxins that um, are manipulated so that they're not harmful. And it can be a virus-like particle. So it's just a protein capsid with the antigens on the outside, not the actual virus, but they act like how the virus would act. So these are the things that vaccines are made up of. So not necessarily the virus itself, okay, but they're the antigens that may be associated with a particular virus that your body can then create antibodies that are going to be specific to those. You may be aware we have lots of vaccination programs, okay, and in a vaccination program there is usually um, two or more uh vaccines that occur. So the first time you're given a vaccine is the first time that you're coming across that particular antigen, all right, for a virus or for a pathogen. Um, so the first time that you're given that, you're coming across the antigen for the first time, and there might be a little bit of a delay in your body creating those antibodies, okay, because we that's what we want. We want our bodies to be creating the antibodies for that. But when we are vaccinated again for a second time we call that our secondary response there's not going to be a delay there's going to be more antibodies that are created and they're going to be created a lot faster causing a much bigger response 
Now, in terms of understanding why vaccines are so important, okay, we have what we call herd immunity. So herd immunity is where the majority of the population is vaccinated against a particular disease or against a particular pathogen so that we can protect even the people who are not vaccinated. So maybe the elderly or people that are immunocompromised that can't get vaccines. If 95% of the population is immunized, there is less of a chance of spread of that particular pathogen throughout the population, okay? So that's what we mean by herd immunity, that those people that can't get vaccinated, okay, are also protected because the vast majority of people do get vaccinated. All right, moving on. In terms of looking at deficiencies of the immune system, we split them into three main parts. So we look at autoimmune diseases, immune deficiency diseases and allergic reactions. So an example of an autoimmune disease is where those cytotoxic T cells are identifying your own cells as non-self. And if they're identifying something as non-self, they're going to target them and they're going to kill them. Okay, so that's where what we call autoantibodies, okay, are attacking our own cells. So an example of this is MS or multiple sclerosis where our own antibodies are attacking the myelin sheath that is around the nerve cell. So if this is a nerve cell here, okay, the myelin sheath covers around the axon and it basically speeds up um, the movement of those neurotransmitters or nerve impulses through a neuron or a nerve cell. But if the um, myelin sheath is damaged, it's going to result in a reduction of those nerve impulses being able to get through, okay? Which means it's going to cause things like um, low response timings um, for, for those people that have MS. So autoimmune is where you are attacking your own cells. We then have immune deficiency diseases, so things like HIV. Immune deficiency diseases is where you have a poorly functioning immune system. So it can be the result of a genetic condition, okay? So it can be, you know, you could have got it from your parents. That's what we call a primary immune deficiency disease. Or it can be from a pathogen, okay, that a person has acquired. So if you're getting it from elsewhere, it is then what we call a secondary immune deficiency disease. And this is where the immune system is unable to combat a pathogen effectively. And so people become more susceptible to infections. So if we look at the example of AIDS and HIV, AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency, um, Immunodeficiency Syndrome, and it results from an uncontrolled and untreated infection from the human immunodeficiency virus, which is HIV. So this causes a compromise in the immune system. It's transmitted through contact of bodily fluids and can also be passed on from the mother across the placenta or through breastfeeding. But this is very rare. Um, in Australia. So when HIV is uncontrolled, it can cause AIDS. This is just an example of that virus there. HIV is a virus. We then also have allergic reactions, which are um, deficiency and malfunction of the immune system. So an allergic response occurs when the body's immune system is activated by a non-pathogenic antigen. Okay, so they're initiated by histamine release from mast cells after IgE antibodies have been bound to a particular antigen. So it's basically where the immune system is overreacting to something that is not usually harmful to a lot of people. So things like peanuts and bee stings, um, allergy to pollen. So the process of becoming allergic, an allergen is going to be ingested or inhaled, okay? Um, the innate immune system is going to kick in, it's going to be activated, and the adaptive immune system is also going to be activated. So those B cells, remember B cells are producing antibodies and there's going to be an overproduction of those IgE antibodies. So IgE antibodies are going to attach themselves to mast cells and these mast cells are now going to be primed and going to be a lot more sensitive and then a secondary exposure to a particular allergen, um, the mast cells are going to be activated and release a whole lot of histamine. And histamine is what's causing that inflammatory response. Okay, so like things like watery eyes and itchy nose. All right, moving on to the last part of this stop point is looking at monoclonal antibodies. 
Monoclonal antibodies are basically antibodies that are made up in a lab by a scientist and are made specifically for specific things. Because remember, each antibody is specific and targeting a specific antigen. So monoclonal antibodies, um, they say we're looking at the treatment of cancer or working towards that. So they could put radioactive substances onto antibodies. They can identify proteins on particular cancer cells. Um, looking at complement cascades, they can attach toxins to particular antibodies. They can target the FASR receptor on cancer cells. They can make antibodies with antigens that are non-self and make them stick to cancer cells and they damage blood vessels leading to tumours. So there's a lot of work going into the um, use of monoclonal antibodies in the treatment of cancer. I'm just going to go over now. We've um, got a couple minutes just to go through some of the immune system that we missed out on in the last video that I just told you to sort of pause the screen and read. So just to recap in terms of the three lines of defense, the first line of defense was those physical, chemical and microbiological barriers that are stopping things from coming inside the cell. We then have our second line of defense, which is looking at our innate or non-specific response. So the body is going to respond the exact same way no matter what the pathogen is but this is where our b cell uh, our um sorry our phagocytes are involved and they're engulfing um any foreign material we then have our third line of defense which is more specific okay which is where we're looking at the production of particular antibodies and um them being specific to the antigens that are found on the pathogen we can split this up into the humoral response or the cell-mediated response. So in terms of humoral, we're focusing on B cells, whereas cell-mediated, we're focusing on T cells. So in terms of looking at B cells, B cells are the cells that are producing antibodies. Okay, so antibodies are specific to particular antigens that are found on the pathogen. B cells that are produced are memory cells, okay, so that when you encounter that particular pathogen again, um, our body is going to know what to do and how to react to it. And our plasma cells are the ones that are producing the um, antibodies. So in terms of looking at the structure of an antibody, we went through this quickly in the last video, but we have our constant region and we have our variable region. So constant region stays the same for every antibody, but our variable region is what is changing because the antigen is what's going to bind to um, this particular antibody. And you can see that here. If this is the antibody, the antigen has to fit um, directly at that antigen binding site. So in terms of looking at the T cell component, so the action of helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells in cell mediated immunity, um, there are those two types. So helper T cells are activated by cytotoxic T cells, but they're also activated by other helper T cells and they activate B cells. Okay, so T helper cells, think of them as helpers, they are helping activate B cells. Our cytotoxic T cells, okay, are the ones that are destroying target cells. Okay, so when they come in contact with a target, they're the ones that are destroying them. They are releasing molecules that are causing cell death. So what happens is there are antigens that are identified um, and activate specific cytotoxic T cells. So if this is the pathogen, we've got our antigens attached to them. Cytotoxic T cells are coming along. With the assistance of helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells, um, those cells begin to multiply. And then the cytotoxic T cells are attaching and destroying the abnormal cell. Okay, so some cytotoxic T cells remain as memory cells and those B cells are then going to produce those memory cells as well. In terms of the lymphatic system that we didn't really get to last lesson, um, it is a network of vessels that are across the body that are also fighting infection. So their roles to return fluid to blood, they filter the tissue fluid and they transport white blood cells around the body okay they are also the site of lymphatic um, lymphocyte maturation so the white blood cells are what lymphocytes are 
Hopefully this gives you a little bit more of an idea. If you still have any questions, please leave them below and I'm more than happy to help out.